go. Okay, hi, it's time for reading. So, St. Patrick's reading, 9.30 to 10.15. My friend Wes just changed it. Uh, today is what we're gonna work on. I can write a summary of a story I read. Cole, can you see this? Yeah. All right, this is our summarizing sheet. And we're gonna look up these things, character, setting, the hope or wish of the main character, a problem, and how do they solve it? What is the solution? And you can see the symbols. So, Men and women, the where and when, someone wanting something, problems or roadblock, and what do they do to solve it? Today we're gonna to look at this story. It's by Tommy DePaula. It's called Patrick, Patron Saint of Ireland. And the student, well, look at me please. The students in my class, you may look at me, up here at me. The students in my class, you might remember from the art lesson, Tommy DePaula wrote that. So he wrote a number of these books. Um, we'll get into that later. Let's just read the story. You got the book there, brother? Yeah. All right. Patrick, patron saint of Ireland by Tommy DePaula. Many years ago during the, oh, to my Irish mother, Flossie Downey DePaula, TDP. Special thanks to my studio assistant, Raphael Nas, for his generous help, Tommy DePaula. Many years ago, during the time of the Christian Roman Empire, there lived a boy named Patrick. He lived with his noble family in Britain, near the Irish Sea. One night, fierce Irishmen from the island across the water came in their boats and raided the farms on the British mainland. They captured many people, Patrick among them. They took him back to Ireland and sold him as a slave to a man named Miliuk. Now that I own you, said Miliuk, I will take you to Mount Slamish, where you shall watch my sheep. For six years in this strange and pagan land, Patrick, who was used to warm clothes, good food, and a nice house, was a shepherd, and he was very lonely. All he could do was pray to God over and over and over and over again, a hundred times during the day, a hundred times during the night, and he felt the love of God in his heart. Patrick's prayers did not go unanswered. During his sleep, a voice came to him. It is a good thing that you fast and pray, for soon you will go to your own country. See, your ship is ready. The ship was more than 200 miles away, but that didn't stop Patrick. Believing in the strength of God, Patrick went on his way, fearing nothing. Now the ship was filled with hunting hounds that were being taken to France to be sold to rich people. When the hounds saw Patrick, they stopped barking and began to wag their tails. Patrick offered to pay for his passage, but the captain worried that he might be an escaped slave and said, I cannot take you with us. Get off my ship. So Patrick left. He began to pray that the captain would change his mind. The hounds started to howl. Oh, those hounds were fine when that fellow was here, said one of the men, but now they're making so much noise. They'll raise the dead. Run and get him, said the captain or else we will have no peace on our journey. Patrick's prayers were answered. He was allowed to board the ship, and it set sail. After three days, the ship landed. The countryside was deserted because there had been a war. For 28 days, the men and the hounds traveled through the desolate land, finally overcome with hunger. Is this true? A true story? I don't know. Some people believe it's true. Tell me, Christian, the captain said. You say that your God is great and all-powerful. Why don't you pray for us then? Can't you see how hungry we are? Nothing is impossible for my God. This day he will send food to us. Suddenly, a herd of pigs appeared on the road in front of them, winking and squealing. The men caught and killed them. For two days, everyone, including the dogs, had plenty to eat, and they did not go hungry again. Soon, Patrick left the little group and traveled alone for two years. When he finally arrived back home in Britain, his family rejoiced and begged for him never to leave again. Even his dog. Once more, Patrick had a dream. This time, a man named Vic Victoricius appeared to him. Victoricius had come from Ireland with an armload of letters. He gave one of them to Patrick. It read... The voice of the Irish. Then Patrick heard voices calling from the woods. 
Come and walk among us again. Patrick woke up. He wasn't sure what the dream meant. A few nights later, Patrick heard more voices calling to him, and then he knew what he must do. He must return to Ireland and take the people the good news of God. Although it was hard to part with his family, Patrick left home to study and become a missionary. Finally, he was ready to sail for Ireland and take the word of God to the Irish people. He sold his worldly goods, brought all he needed for his work, and hired a boat. A huge crowd went along to help him. Priests, bakers, chariot drivers, all kinds of people. Patrick was now a bishop, that's somebody who works for the church, and the work that God planned for him was about to begin. Shortly after the ship landed in Ireland, Patrick met a chieftain who was a good and kind man. The chieftain's name was Dichu, and he listened to Patrick talk about his love of God. He believed everything that Patrick told him and asked Patrick to baptize him into this new religion. Dichu gave Patrick the barn that became the first church in Ireland. Aha. But not everything happened to, that happened to Patrick was easy. Patrick's chariot driver, Orden, overheard that a king planned to kill Patrick. Orden wanted to protect his master. Bishop Patrick, he said, would you be so kind as to drive the chariot today? I am very tired. So Patrick agreed. As they were driving, the king threw his spear and killed Orden, thinking he was the bishop. Patrick escaped, but he was sad, knowing that his friend Orden had given up his life to protect him. Patrick faced many other dangers too. In fact, he came close to losing his life 12 times, but that didn't stop him. Through the years, he traveled many, many miles and baptized thousands of people. On March 17th, 461, Patrick died. Patrick's love of God had been so great that shortly thereafter his death, churches were built all over the land and Patrick was made a saint. Young men and women became monks and priests and nuns, and they served the people of Ireland in churches, monasteries, and schools. They traveled to other lands preaching the love of God just as Patrick had done when he came to the Emerald Isle. And even to this day, the Irish love their patron Saint Patrick. There are many legends about Saint Patrick, and here are a few of them. Saint Patrick and the snakes. Some people say there are no snakes in Ireland because Saint Patrick drove them out just as he had driven out sin. Patrick got rid of the snakes by beating a drum hard and fast. The snakes couldn't stand the noise, so they slithered into the sea. Here's another legend. St. Patrick and the Lost Horses. One dark night, Patrick's chariot driver lost his horses. It was so dark that he couldn't even look for them. Patrick raised his hand and each of his five fingers lit up. In the light, the chariot driver was able to find his lost horses. St. Patrick and the evil... Coronavirus. Coronavirus and the evil coronavirus. Coronavirus was a cruel ruler. He persecuted everybody, including Patrick, who wrote him a letter and said, Hey, stop being around. When Patrick heard this, he prayed, and then he turned yeah. the guy into a fox. So, there you go. And then... Coronavirus? <laughs> all right, it goes on and on. And there, oh, here's one about the shamrock. Let's skip to this. When St. Patrick was preaching about... Yeah, let's we'll skip that too. And there we go. So there's all sorts of legends of St. Patrick, and that is a history as it is understood. Is it true that he did all those things? I don't know. It depends on what you believe, but that's just how the story goes.